final direct lesson in the unit. I say maybe because we probably will, we might, I should say, we, we might spend a little bit of time on uh, compression, the compressibility of solids, I'm sorry, of liquids versus gases. But anyway, here's what we're talking about today. So make a nice big heading, dynamic systems. And uh, there's really not too much for you to note. I will tell you um, what you should be um, jotting down, what's really important, okay? So dynamic systems, basically systems, dynamic means things that can move. So in this case, there'll be two, two types of systems, pneumatic systems that make use of gases and hydraulic systems that make use of liquids. But they're all fluid dynamic systems, meaning there's always a fluid moving in these systems. So here we go. Uh, well, I guess I just kind of blobbed on a little bit about already dynamic systems. So simply means there's stuff moving. And in this case, in our case, really that the heading of the slide should really be fluid dynamic systems. So we're talking about fluids that are moving in order to do work, in order to, to accomplish a task for us. Okay? Um, and there's some very common examples. So like I said earlier, the first one we're going to talk about is a pneumatic system. And pneumatic systems, and this is what you should really jot down. So you should have under, um, really, if you have a new page and you had, if you had um, dynamic systems across the top, maybe you cut the page in half down the middle uh, lengthwise. On the left-hand side, write down pneumatic system, and we'll put all the characteristics of a pneumatic system on the left, and then on the right, we'll write down all the um, characteristics of a hydraulic system. So the first part of a pneumatic system, and by the way, just pause if, I, if I'm going along too fast here, obviously you can just pause, is that pneumatic systems make use of the fact, or make use of a gas, a fluid that's in the gas state. For example, a jackhammer, a sailboat. Um, often, the other thing that a pneumatic system makes use of, since gases can easily be compressed, in other words, we can take a volume of a gas and using another force, push it together. Since the particles are so far apart in a gas, there's lots of spaces between them, we can push those particles closer together. So we can compress the gas and basically store some energy. And that's what this jackhammer is making use of. So someplace behind uh, the person taking down that staircase, there's a compressor that's feeding um, compressed air, highly pressed, therefore highly pressurized air, to that tool. And when a burst of, of the pressurized air is let out, it um, sends a force through this tool. And then you can see here, we bring it down to a very small area, and therefore that force over a small area increases the amount of pressure that the tool um, can exert, exert upon the, um, the concrete staircase. So that's basically a pneumatic system in a, in a nutshell. Um, there's just another example. You might hear these at work. You know, there's a construction site nearby. Um, you, you might hear less hammering now and more use of an air nailer, a device again like this. Terrible quality picture, I apologize. But here's the connection. This is a hose that goes off to the compressor, storing compressed air um, connected to the nailer. Again, you pull the trigger. A burst of compressed air is released. That creates force that drives a nail into, into the wood. Okay, hydraulic systems. So on the other side, um, the opposite of a pneumatic is a hydraulic system, and that's because hydraulic systems make use of liquids. Now, the, the key property here is that liquids, and please make sure you note this, liquids are not easily compressed. In fact, liquids compress almost not at all. Very, very small amount. So that means, due to Pascal's law, if we apply a small amount, if we not necessarily a small amount, but if we apply some force to a fluid, in this case a liquid, it is transmitted evenly throughout that liquid. So here is something we see quite often around the city here. There's almost always, every block you go, there's a house being torn down or a, a basement being excavated. And these machines are really efficient at doing that work, an, an excavator, if you will, sometimes called a backhoe. Um, and it's hard to see in this picture, and we should probably get some real actual pictures installed to this PowerPoint. But the, there are pipes and tubes up and down the boom, the boom arm of this device. Back here someplace there's a generator that's creating force that is pushing 
against a reservoir of hydraulic fluid. And that reservoir, that pool of fluid, is in a container, and it's connected to all these tubes and hoses that go up and down the boom arm. And then there's a series of valves that open and close and allow the fluid to either push um, on certain other parts of the arm here, and that's how this device works and creates an incredible amount of force. Um, I spent a couple of summers working construction, and one summer uh, my boss decided that um, there, there wasn't enough people that could run things, run pieces of machinery, so he trained me to, to run a very small version of these excavators in order to dig um, trenches for an irrigation system on a ranch. And I was, and um, so it was really surprising to me how strong and how powerful even a smaller excavator was. I can't even imagine how powerful the, the large ones are. Okay, anyway, that's pretty much it. Some examples there, another example of a hydraulic system uh, right there. If you bring a car in to be worked on and they have to lift it up to look underneath, that this um, device here is being pushed upwards by another larger piston pushing downwards someplace else off to the, you know, in the machinery below or to the side someplace. And then a hydraulic fluid is pushing this uh, pedestal up to lift the car. Okay, so that's it. So you should have a nice little set of notes now on hydraulic and pneumatic systems.